Minnesota. I represent the eastern half of Wright County. I'm joined today with my colleagues, Representative Mark Biskins and Representative Peggy Scott. Uh, we're here today to talk about the Freedom Health Care Act. Uh, this is nothing new. I want to preface the comments. I actually offered this bill uh, two or three years ago the first time. It was the subject of much uh, debate on the House floor in, uh, I can't remember, you'll have to check the record, either 2007 or 2008. Uh, and then I offered it again this past session. Uh, we just figured that uh, in light of some of the events that have been taking place over the past uh, 30 to 45 days, uh, it's important that we not only uh, have people recognize that this bill has, has been in the works here in the state of Minnesota, uh, but also that it is a very important uh, part of uh, Minnesota's future, we believe. Uh, briefly, and I'm going to read you some, uh, which I don't normally do, but I'm going to try and stay on task. I'm going to read to you some uh, comments about uh, why the Minnesota Health Care Freedom Act and why now. Uh, efforts in Minnesota and around the country are underway, as you know, to put uh, complete control uh, of health care in the hands of government bureaucrats and appointed experts. Government control means that Minnesotans will have less freedom to make their personal health care choices, those choices that are best for them and their family. The Health Care Freedom Act would preserve and protect the rights of individuals to make their own health care and health insurance choices. Specifically, it would protect the rights of patients to pay directly for medical services and it would prohibit any individual or employer from being penalized for not purchasing government-defined health insurance. Single-payer systems, like in Canada, make it illegal for citizens to go outside of the government's health care plan and contract for their own medical services. The Health Care Freedom Act would make this fundamental provision of a single-payer government health care program unconstitutional. Patients, we believe, should have the right to pay directly for medical services with their own money. That's because when consumers control the dollars, they make the treatment decisions. When the government controls the dollars, the government makes the treatment decisions based on what's best for the government and not necessarily what's best for the patient. The consequences of government making decisions, making medical decisions, can often be dire and sometimes even deadly. Look at, for instance, what's happened in New Zealand, where breast cancer patients are blocked from accessing the life-saving drug Herceptin because it, is, it, because it costs too much. In Sweden, the wait for heart surgery can be as long as 25 weeks. And in Canada, more than 800,000 patients are currently on waiting lists to receive medical procedures. Preserving the rights of patients to pay directly for medical care ensures patients and not government bureaucrats decide which doctor to see or what medical treatments they will receive. It is important for the people of Minnesota to have health insurance coverage, but a government requirement to purchase health insurance is ineffective, bureaucratic, and costly. The Health Care Freedom Act would strike at the heart of individual and employer mandates uh, such as those that have been implemented in Massachusetts, Hawaii, and elsewhere that have been proven uh, not to work. It, in fact, if we look at what happened in Massachusetts, uh, which is a state that imposed an individual mandate and an employer mandate, more than one-third of Massachusetts uninsured still don't have coverage because it's nearly impossible to keep track of who has health insurance and who doesn't. Employer mandates also do not work. Hawaii has had a pay-to-play employer mandate for 35 years, and the number of uninsured people there has remained the same. What's worse is that when government forces businesses to buy health insurance for their workers, it really means higher taxes and fewer jobs. That's because when businesses face cost increases, they pass those increases on to uh, uh, the people, the consumers, in the forms of price jobs, job cuts, or wage freezes. An individual mandate would harm patients, and an employer mandate threatens our already fragile economy. The Health Care Freedom Act would protect Minnesotans from these threats. I want to make it clear that we are not against health care reform. Quite the contrary. The Health Care Reform Act, or Health Care Freedom Act, simply states that the cornerstone of any future health care reform must be the preservation and protection of the right of individuals to make their own health care choices. 
uh, there have been some questions about uh, the Tenth Amendment, and we all know that states have the rights to assert their Tenth Amendment powers and affirm those rights in the state constitution. 220 years ago, some founders questioned the need for the First and Second Amendments to the Constitution, and in fact, the rest of the Bill of Rights. Our rights have been preserved, however, by the First and Second Amendments, and the Health Care Freedom Act would simply protect the individual citizen's right to health care freedom in the same way. This uh, bill addresses something that's more aptly described as potential federal encroachment. The threat of a single-payer health uh, system uh, or an individual or employer mandate uh, that could occur at a state level uh, as well. Uh, this year, 14 states have introduced legislation to enact state-based single-payer health care. Countless other states have proposed requirements for individuals or employers to purchase health coverage or else pay a fine to the state. Those threats, uh, those threats exist here in Minnesota as well. Uh, in fact, we even have a senator here in this state who has said, quote, he would end the health insurance industry in this state. Uh, the Health Care Reform Act would make these assaults on patient rights unconstitutional and the time for this constitutional protection is now. Again, uh, this will not tie, we do not believe, Minnesota's ability to uh, enact uh, significant health care reform in the future. It will simply create two guidelines for future health care reform. The right to opt out of a government sanctioned health care system and the right to spend your own money on lawful medical services. And with that, I'd turn it over to my colleague, uh, Representative Peggy Scott. Well, um, welcome this morning. I'm very proud to stand here today with my colleagues as a representative of the people and a defender of their rights. Over the past few months, we've learned that Minnesotans have very strong opinions about what happens to, happens to their health care. This amendment gives us the chance for a statewide town hall in the form of a ballot question. The Health Care Freedom Act will preserve and protect the rights of individuals to make their own health care and health insurance choices. Specifically, it would protect the rights of patients to pay directly for medical services, and it would prohibit any individual or employer from being penalized for not purchasing government-defined health care. And again, to reiterate what Tom said, this, we still recognize that um, there does need to be a health care reform and that it's important for people to have health care coverage. Uh, again, referencing the Massachusetts um, program that they have, one third of their people of the uninsured still do not have coverage because again it's it's very difficult to track who has health insurance and who doesn't <laughs> and the Massachusetts mandate didn't just affect the uninsured the Massachusetts government actually told 20 percent of its already insured citizens to buy more health insurance because what they had uh, wasn't quote unquote um, good enough so um, it's also important to consider the, the impact mandated coverage will have on small businesses generally and on health insurance and on the health insurance industry specifically. Direct health and medical insurance carriers employ over 19,000 people in the state of Minnesota across our state. Direct health and medical insurance, uh, excuse me, these are our family members, our friends, and our neighbors. Government mandates and intrusions threaten the health insurance industry and with it the jobs of thousands. Um, we are urging the legislative leadership to recognize Minnesotans' rights for free choice in health care. With the Health Care Freedom Act, we're putting Minnesotans first. We are providing the opportunity for them to assert their voice and their choice in, health, in the health care debate. Thank you. I'll, we'll open it up for questions. Yeah, or do you have, I'll throw yes. something okay. in here. Representative Mark Biskins from Scott County. You know, at the end of the day, uh, as, as rep both representatives have said, you know, we're not saying we don't need health care reform. But I will say the problem with our health care system is not not enough government involvement. Our problem is too gosh darn much government involvement. When you look at the 69 mandates in the state of Minnesota just to provide health care, mandates that the government imposed, you're going to have problems. When you look at the fencing out of so many potential health care providers, 
thus reducing competition, these are fencing out positions that government has imposed, you're going to have problems. So when we look for health care reform, we need to move towards a more market-based system, not a less market-based system. Now this issue that we're bringing forward is a proposal, as Representative Scott said, a statewide town hall meeting. Statewide. We're going to the people. We're not in the pockets of um, big insurance companies. If we are, we'd look at this as a statutory provision. We're not. We're going to trust the people. And if you look at half of the legislature pertinent is running for government, for governor, you'd think this is going to be an easy one to get out there. If they want the people to vote for them, they should want to be able to let the people vote for their own health care decisions or not. At the end of the day, you know, we hear a lot about um, blue dog and, lap and yellow dog. Well, Minnesota is not going to be the lap dog of the federal government when it comes to health care. We need to stand up, we need to put this before the people, let the people decide if they want free choice in their health care um, or if they want government to go down the road of more and more involvement and ultimately a single payer mandate. Thank you. We'll stand for questions. Any reason to think that this has any better chances in the 2010 legislature than it did in the last three sessions? That's a great question, Martiga. The answer is yes. I think what you saw during the uh, uh, recess uh, that our uh, congressional delegation had over August uh, tells you that this is not only an important issue, but this is an issue that uh, Minnesotans and frankly uh, private citizens all across this country are extremely uh, well tuned to right now. Uh, and I think that they're, they understand the issue. It's a very simple issue. That's why I think it should get a lot more traction because the issue is here in front of us today. Aren't you addressing a problem that doesn't exist here? Uh, and that is that there is no single payer system proposed. It's not in the bill. The president said on Wednesday he absolutely disavows it and would not support it. Uh, no, Pat, I, I don't think we're addressing something that's not, I, I mean, if I can rephrase your question, you're right. Is there a specific proposal right now in the state of Minnesota? I, I've seen a couple that have been offered. I don't know that they've gotten through committee or even gotten hearings, uh, but the issue is out there, and it is something that's going to be here, whether it's uh, this year or in coming years. This constitutional amendment would get the people to weigh in now to protect their right no matter what happens. Why would you want to be reactive when you can be proactive? Well, we're talking about the federal government here, not the state. Oh, no, we're, talk about we're talking about both. Right, uh, but there is no single payer proposed, so why do you need something to stop it from happening? Uh, I, I think I've, I've already explained that, and I, I think that we do have bills here in the state of Minnesota. We've seen them over the last two or three years. Whether they're getting any traction here is a completely different issue. Uh, this is both a federal issue and a state issue, which was part of my presentation. This constitutional amendment would simply protect the individual's right to choose their own health care uh, whether it be public or private based and make their own decisions that they think are most important to their themselves and their families. Representative Biskins, you mentioned a market based system. What about the 50 million Americans or so that aren't being served by the market based system right now? Well, yeah. I, thank you, Marty. And as you know, there's uh, a lot of debate as to uh, where that number is. Is it 50 million? Is it 45 million? Is it 42 million? Is it as low as 3 million? Right? Well, we, uh, th there should be. There should be a safety net. That's what government should be, is a safety net. But when you go down the path of creating one uh, health care proposal for everyone, that